Somehow, Mario had found the strength to cross the desert's sweltering dunes. Ahead was a sprawling complex of ruins rising out of the sand. Thankfully for, thankful for the shade, Mario and Tippy ventured deeper inside. They were the very ruins that Old Man Watch it had warned them about. What dangers lurked in the shady corridors ahead? Chapter 1-4! Monster of the Ruins! Mario, I can feel a calling. The pure heart is nearby. But wait, I sense something else emanating from the sand dunes. Be careful now, Mario. Something else is waiting for us ahead. Hello, everybody, it's a gear to you, and welcome back to Let's Play Super Paper Mario. In the previous episode, we conquered the old desert, and today's episode, we're going through the old ruins. And hopefully, we'll be able to finish off this horrible chapter forever. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I really like this place. But I mean, we go across this area, and I'm admittedly feeling a little nervous right now because. No, 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 I need that, I need no! I need that mushroom! Okay, I was trying to say that I'm feeling admittedly a little bit nervous because uh, I didn't... I wasn't paying attention to my health in the previous episode and now we're only down to like five. And I kind of don't want to use mushrooms right now, so yeah, I'm a little bit nervous about that admittedly because I thought we'd be fully here, healed when the chapter was over, but that's not the case and now I'm sad. But anyway, we go over this way. Jump across here and go across this area. So, destroy that guy. And, ooh, we got an item, hot sauce. Now that's a spicy sauce, temporary doubles attack. Ooh, I don't remember that power up being a thing, so that might be useful at some point. Probably, maybe, hopefully, kind of. Life stream right there if you need it. It will restore five HP if you die, so that's pretty nice. I'm going to use an item because why not? So now we're going across this area and go inside the door. Now something I was mentioning in the previous episode was that I was pretty happy that I can actually hear the game audio while recording this video. And that's something I'd like to discuss just a little bit more because I didn't really go into it. So lately whenever- oh okay first of all this right here something really funny. I think this this might be like an oversight but if you use uh, uh, Tippy right here. This is a flip block. It will change dimensions as it rotates. Might just uh, help you get somewhere. That might be intentional, but I think it's more of an oversight because uh, maybe Tippy can see it from that side. I don't really know, but yeah, there's a flip switch right there and that's pretty cool. But in the previous episode, I was mentioning how I kind of glossed over the fact that I was able to hear the game audio while recording this video. I didn't really get into why that was so exciting because uh, Whenever, lately, I've been recording a lot of Nintendo Switch games and things like that, and that's always really fun. But the problem with recording Switch games is I can't hear my game audio while recording. With this, I can because I'm recording on the Wii U. Now, I was going to record on the Wii using an HDMI adapter and things like that. I decided not to because during recording tests, I noticed that the video output was just a little bit more stretched than I would have liked. Uh, Super Paper Mario isn't fully widescreen, so that's why the aspect ratio isn't quite as wide as it could be. If I wanted to make it stretch, then I could stretch it to the full aspect ratio of the YouTube video. Um, but decide not to. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but the, the thing is, I can record this while listening to the Wii U gamepad. I have a pair of headphones plugged into that right now. Although the gamepad is almost dead, so I'm probably going to have to charge that in a moment. There's really no workaround with that for the Switch, though, or really for any other console that I'm not recording from the Wii U. So, what I tried to do when I first started doing test recordings for the Switch was I tried having the Switch itself pretty close to me and still having headphones plugged in. That didn't work because if you have headphones plugged into your Switch, when it's connected to the TV, it won't actually output from the audio won't actually output from the dock, it will go to the headphones instead which means that the capture card won't actually record the sound anymore. So that was one unfortunate thing that I had to kind of work with for a while. Now I probably could find some kind of fancy headphone thing that can make me, they can plug into my TV, but the problem with that is that it would either need a really long cord or some kind of fancy Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth headset. I do have a Bluetooth headset, but 
this one works a bit differently than I would have liked. And that's the end bit on the unfortunate side. Uh, that's something that I wanted to do. There's something there. I'll show it to you. Oh boy, it's a platform! I was told recently that whenever I do that voice, they sound like Mickey Mouse. That's not intentional. <laughs> we go over this way, and there's an invisible platform. Ooh, fancy. Buzzy Beetle Cloud. So we go over this way, and... Haha, -ha. we got to see the 3D area just barely on screen in the 2D world. Now, something I'd like to say is I don't know if this guy has made the video on this game at the time that this video is being uploaded, but I would love to see a boundary break episode on Super Paper Mario because I would love to see how this all works. But at the same time, I kind of stopped watching that guy's channel because, like, nothing against the guy himself. It's just that it seemed like every video he was talking about how uh, YouTuber is kind of screwing over his radio views and things like that and i don't know if it's just me or anybody else feels this way but whenever i hear a big youtuber talk about how unhappy he is with youtube views it kind of makes me feel like why bother watching because if i'm watching the video um regularly but they're still complaining about views then like why bother so now we go over this way we'll climb up the ladder of our destiny and this switch uh, seems uh, pretty suspicious. Let's touch it! <laughs> we almost didn't make it! Might just be biased because this is my favorite Mario RPG ever, but that just looks so visually appealing to look at. <laughs> and if you flip into 3D, we can see this area too. It's kind of funny seeing them stacked like this because they don't really make it a solid platform, but Mario just kind of floats in the air. It's pretty funny. And now we can see these switches over here, and they are red. Hmm. Nope, no foreshadowing for a future Nintendo console or anything like that. Mostly because that console wasn't in development at the time this game was being made. And oh no, my Wii U gamepad died so I can't hear the game anymore. Oh no, what are we gonna do? <laughs> so now we'll be going up these areas. That was not the proper way to word that, but who cares. Now, something pretty funny is if you stand on top of this uh, pipe, another minor oversight is if you flip back into 2D, Mario would do the animation that he's about to fall, even though he's standing on the platform. <laughs> uh, that's just pretty amusing. Now, I'm actually going to be saving my game right here, and the reason why you may have figured by looking at the video title of the video, but this is actually part one of two. Some of these chapters can go on for a fairly long time, so what I'll be doing during points like this is we'll be splitting off the video, and you'll see, you know, and I'll be sure to make it clear in the video title if we're going to be splitting off into multiple parts. So, but now that we're taking care of all that, we're going to end of this video off here. So thank you all so much for watching this video of Super Paper Mario, and until next time, we'll get to you. Oh yeah.